السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Can you all hear me? الحمد لله نحمده ونصلي على رسوله الكريم أما بعد فعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم رب شرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وأحل الأبدة من لساني يفقه قولي ربنا زدنا علما ربنا زدنا علما ربنا زدنا علما اللهم فقهنا في الدين اللهم فقهنا في الدين اللهم فقهنا في الدين اللهم إنا نسألك علما نافعا ورزقا طيبا وعملا متقبلا اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد الحمد لله هو أول في Alhamdulillah. Uh, for taking the time out uh, to attend the class. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put lots of barakah in your life, in your time, and in your knowledge. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept it in, in these great days that we are in. The, the, the yearning that you have to seek knowledge and the fact that you are sitting and, and, and emptying yourself with everything that has to do with the dunya and sitting down to gain the knowledge of um, the Quran and Sunnah, Alhamdulillah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala heal the sick among us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for the sisters who are going through a difficult time, um, be it financially, be it emotionally, may Allah, or be it spiritually, may Allah make it easy for all the sisters. Amin Ya Rabbi. Alhamdulillah. So the topic of our talk today is, what is the topic of our talk? What are we going to be speaking about? What are we going to be speaking? Okay, alhamdulillah. I was going to do this as a quiz. How many of you know the months in Islam? By heart. How many of you know the months in Islam by heart? Okay, mashallah. Okay. Rakia says she knows by heart. Okay, who else? Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. So you know, okay. Did someone send me a voice note? No. Okay, alhamdulillah. That's very good. And the easiest way to memorize the names in Islam is, I think, Zain Bika's uh, poem. If you learn that, then you know uh, how it is. Alhamdulillah. So these are the 12 months in Islam. Yeah, it's in a song. Yes, that's how we all remember it. Alhamdulillah. So, and we all know ninth month of Islam is Ramadan, alhamdulillah. And Dhul Hajjah is the last month of the Islamic calendar. Alhamdulillah. Um, just we'll go through Muharram, Safar, Rabi ul Awwal, Rabi ul Thani, Jamadi ul Awwal, Jamadi ul Thani, Rajab, Sha'ban, Ramadan, Shawwal, Dhul Qa'da, Dhul Hijjah. And the months of Hajj, the months of Hajj are from Shawwal until Dhul Hajj. Okay, because at the time of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, people would start their traveling uh, because they didn't live in the times of airplane. They didn't have the convenience of travel. So they would start from Shawwal so that they will reach in Dhul Hajj for Hajj. So the months of Hajj are three, Shawwal, Dhul Qa'da, Dhul Hajj. And, and that brings me to the next thing that Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala in Surah Al Tawbah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, indeed, the number of months with Allah is 12. 12 lunar months. Islamic calendar is according to the moon in a year, as ordained in the register of Allah on the day when he created the heavens and the earth. And of them, four are sacred. And what are the four? The first being, um, you know, maha, well, how would you memorize the four sacred months? You would you would say, Rajab is not, is you know, the seventh month, and then come 11, 12, and the first month. That's easy. Um, Dhul Qa'da, Dhul Hijjah, and Muharram. Okay. 
and then Rajab on, on its own. These are the sacred months and that is the correct religion. So wrong, not yourselves therein. So what is the meaning of the sanctity of this month? To simply put it, this was a restriction put at the time um, and it is still uh, at the moment as we speak that when people would be traveling to, uh, to, to perform Hajj so uh, and to honor those pilgrims, it was absolutely forbidden to start fighting therein. Prohibitions were, yeah. So, you know, at the time looting was common, people would, um, you know, they wouldn't care. So the, the, a safety net was provided. I say, okay, my voice is breaking. Okay, subhanAllah, it isn't. out by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as sacred so they are indisputably special the second thing the forbidden the prohibition was that you don't fight and the third and most important our deeds good and bad carry more weight during the sacred months we have to be extra cautious um, extra cautious in terms of doing anything that displeases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and um, because like how your good deeds are going to be doubled in this month, so are the bad deeds. So, you know, Alhamdulillah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us an opportunity for us to get together, to do a quick revision of some, I, I know most of you know things already. It is just so that we remind each other. You're going to remind some things to me and I'm going to remind some things to you that I know, inshallah. So, Alhamdulillah, firstly, we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for giving us the life, the gift of life that we've reached the best season of obedience to him. Allah gave us this opportunity. Many people, many people, uh, you know, some of our age, some younger than us, some older than us, who were there last year are not here today. So it is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's great blessing and that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has allowed us to witness another month, another, another season, of khair that we can benefit from and then uh, the blessing of islam that allah blessed us with islam you know i often think if we were born in a non-muslim family where would we be and it is only allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's great blessing that allah has um, you know, brought us into a Muslim family, made us Muslims, given us the gift of Islam for all the sisters who have reverted to Islam. What a blessing. Alhamdulillah. So we start with showing immense gratitude that we are here, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving us an opportunity uh, to do good because we're not sure if we're going to be here next year. So we make dua that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allows us to do good deeds and allow and accepts it from us. And um, because without the, without the tawfiq of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we can't really do anything. Now, what is, how do we know that these days are important? And alhamdulillah by now you all know when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes oath of something that is, is of high importance. And in Surah Al-Fajr, Allah says, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, well, fajr, well, ashr. Now you would say, I mean, the translation would say by the dawn and by the 10 nights. And you would think, okay, these are 10 nights. But in Arabic, the nights and the day are the same. And here when they've done the tafsir, it, these 10 nights are the 10 days of Dhul Hijjah. Okay. Um, so we, we get, do you get this proof? And you see, um, Ibn Abbas, Ibn Zubair, and Mujahid, they all, and, and, and the earlier and later generations, they all unanimously agree that these are the 10 days of Dhul Hijjah. So these, the, the days 
in the sight of Allah, which are the best are these 10 days. And in, in the, in during these days, the best action a person can do is sacrificing an animal, the udhiya. That's the best action that you can do. And sadly, you know, we have a culture whereby we, put, we exert, all of us tend to exert a lot of effort in the last 10 nights of Ramadan and people tend to ignore the days of the hijjah So Alhamdulillah that you have come in the class to, you know, to do a bit of revision on little things that you can um, improve yourself, Alhamdulillah, and how to make the best of these days. Now, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala calls these days ayyami ma'lumat, the known days. And what are the known days, the th these 10 days, and the three days of ayyam tashriq. And like I said, deeds are, good deeds are doubled, yeah? So we need, what we'll inshallah learn what are the things we can do. Now that was a proof from the Quran. Now there's a hadith. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that there are no days on which righteous deeds are more beloved to Allah than these 10 days. And the Sahaba asked, not even fighting for the sake of Allah. He sallallahu alayhi wa sallam replied, not even fighting for the sake of Allah, unless a man goes out himself for jihad taking his wealth with him and does not come back with anything, meaning he gave his life for Islam. Okay, so do we understand the importance that it goes on above the level of jihad? So whatever righteous deeds we are doing, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala holds those deeds dear to us. And this is based on the evidence we have from Al-Bukhari. So, these texts and others indicate that these 10 days are better than all other days. I'm reading Kafir Ibn al Kathir, okay, with no exception. And even they are better than the last 10 days of Ramadan, but last 10 nights of Ramadan. So you, you see the difference? Days of Dhil Hijjah and the nights of Ramadan. Why? Because nights of Ramadan include Laylatul Qadr. But the days, if you were to compare which ones are better, the days of Ramadan or the days of the Hijjah, it is the days of the Hijjah which are better than the days of Ramadan. Have I confused you? Are you understanding what I'm saying? Okay, Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. May Allah allow us to benefit from this month in the best way possible. So what do we say? We, we say that, you know, maybe this Ramadan, we didn't do our best. Maybe we lacked. Maybe we've done things that we, we think that we could have done better. So look at how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a Rahman, a Rahim. He subhanahu wa ta'ala provides opportunity. Okay, these are the 10 days, try and make up. Try and make up what you missed out in Ramadan. Yeah. So it is our chance and, you know, subhanAllah, I understand that, you know, three days have already gone. For some people, two days have gone, but let's make the most of what we have now, okay? Now, the, these, why are these the best 10 days? Can you tell me what, how is it that it combines all five pillars of Islam in them? Can you tell me? I want answers. The scholars say that it is these 10 days are the best because they combine all five pillars. So what are the five pillars? Okay, you fast, you do hajj, okay. Then you pray, okay. Okay, you give charity, alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah, and you are all constantly saying the shahada, alhamdulillah. So you see, there is no other act of worship that combines all the five pillars, yes. Alhamdulillah. Yes, zakat. You can also you can also um, give your zakat if you have not done so, or you want to give a, um, a year ahead. You can do so. Of course, you can. All right. So, alhamdulillah. So, what are the things that we can do to maximize the rewards? That's what we're here for. Number one, most importantly, let's renew our intentions. 
We're here to seek the face of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of judgment. We are going to do whatever we're going to do in these days to seek the noble face of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to see his face, inshallah. So number one, increase in dhikr. Ma MashaAllah, tabarakallah, most of you have written. Now, we are encouraged, and this is from Surah Hajj, that and Surah Hajj, ayah number 28, that they may witness benefits for themselves and they mention the name of Allah on known days. What are the known days? The first 10 days of Dhil Hijjah, over what he has provided for them of sacrificial animals. So eat of them and feed the poor. And here, Ibn Abbas gives his tafsir saying, you know, make mention of the names of Allah. It is to recite the takbirat. And inshallah, I'll, I'll give you, I have um, added a slide. So for people who to know what are the takbirat. So increasing in takbirat, increasing, constant increasing and in repetition of the takbirat. So that's, and another hadith that we have, Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has commanded us to recite a lot of tasbih, which is going to be subhanallah, tahmeed, alhamdulillah, takbir, Allahu Akbar during this time. And Abdullah, Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhum reported that the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, there are no days greater in the sight of Allah in which righteous deeds are more beloved to him than these 10 days. So during this time, increase a great deal of tahleel, takbir, and tahmeel. So you know what, if you, if you can grab yourself a pen and a paper so you can write down the list, to-do list, all right? So you can say, you know, Maybe I'm going to do 100 times, uh, subhanallah, tasbih, 100 times. Um, 100 uh, times I'm going to do tasbih of uh, alhamdulillah, 100 times Allahu Akbar. You can add to it la ilaha illallah. You can add to it uh, la hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. Okay? Because these are all remembrance of azkar, right? These are azkar. So try and increase. And we, we know this because Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has asked us to do that. Okay, number two, fasting. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to fast all the nine days, all the nine days. It is, it is a sunnah of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to fast the first nine days of the hijjah And what else would he fast on, on the day of Ashura? Yeah, the 10th of Muharram. The three days each month, meaning the 13th, 14th, and the 15th, the first Monday of the month and the two Thursdays. This is the hadith. Okay, so for those of you who will not, who, who, who think they are weak and they are not able to fast the nine days, because I understand that the weather is hot and, you know, in some countries it, it really can get hot and it is really challenging. May Allah accept it from all of you, my dear sisters, who have been fasting. Yeah, and may Allah accept it from you. But for those who can't, who find themselves weak, then we, you know, we know that if you can fast on the day of Arafah, okay, the day of Arafah, and why, I'll tell you in a minute. And the day of Arafah is a day on which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala perfected and uh, perfected the religion and Allah's favor was completed. So, you know, I'm just going to paraphrase what is written here. You can read it in your own time. A Jewish man came to Umar ibn al-Khattab and he said, Oh, Amir al-Mu'mineen, there is an ayah in, in your book which you recite. And had it come to us Jews, we would celebrate it as an Eid day. And um, Umar ta'ala and who he asked which verse is that? And, and then he referred to Surah Al-Ma'idah, ayah 3. This day I have perfected your religion for you, completed my favor upon you, and I've chosen for you Islam as your religion. And Umar Ta'ala replied that we know on which day, in which place that was revealed to Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and it was on the day of Arafah on a Friday. Okay, so Arafah, the day of Arafah is a day which holds high importance. And you see how the Jewish person understood this day. And they said that they would consider this day as a day of Eid. And the hadith that should, you know, encourage all of us to fast for the ones who can't fast the first nine days is it expiates for the stains of the previous year and the coming year. 
you see? So this is, I think, enough of a motivation. And, and mind you, these are minor sins, not major sins. Major sins can only be rectified when you sincerely do tawbah, okay? So all the minor sins that um, we have done, so this is a, you know, the, I, I feel it's a huge sales season and, you know, may Allah allow us to benefit the sale of getting good deeds. You do this and you get this. And then, you, subhanAllah, fasting on the day of Ashura expiates the sin of the current year. And Arafah expiates the sin of the previous year and the coming year. How kind is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? How generous is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? SubhanAllah. Now, the fasting on Arafah is mustahab, meaning light, most light for those, for all of us who are not, who are not on Hajj. Yeah, but the one who is on Hajj, they're not supposed to fast on Arafah. Okay. There's another hadith where Aisha, Sayyidah Aisha radiallahu anha narrates, um, she said that Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, there is no day on which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala frees more people from fire than the day of Arafah. He comes close and expresses his pride to the angels and saying, saying, what do these people want? So, and now don't be, you know, don't be feeling low that I'm not going to be there on the day of Arafah. Okay. But instead, you know, have hope in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And my suggestion to you is, you know, when the, when the program, you know, is going to be broadcasted live. So when, it, when the time, when people are starting gathering on, and, the ch and the channels are broadcasting it, sit down and start making a dua. Inshallah, I'll tell you what dua to make on the day of Arafah. So you, it's as if you're with them, even if your calendar says something else, even if, you know, maybe it's not the ninth of the Hajjah in, in your place. And, and for those people who, are, who, who don't have the same dates as Saudi, then what I suggest is, you know, why don't you fast a, a day extra? Fast on the eighth of the Hajjah and the ninth. Push yourself a little bit, my dears. Yeah. So it's so that you're included. You're included on the, you know, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is proud of you. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala um, makes us of all those people who Allah frees from the fire. I mean. Now, what should you say on the day of Arafah? The best dua that you can say, and this is the hadith, the best supplication is the supplication of the day of Arafah. And the best thing which I and the prophets before me have said is, La ilaha illallah, wahdahu la sharika lah, lahul mulk wa lahul hamd, wa huwa ala kulli shay'in qadir. There is none worthy of worship in truth except Allah alone. He has no partners. And to him belongs the dominion, to him belongs the praise, and he is capable, has power over all things. Now, you see, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, this is the best thing which I and the prophets before me have said. Meaning, you know, there is dua is of two types. Dua al-ibadah and dua al-masala. And would you believe dua al-ibadah, the dua of worship. Dua al-masala, I mean, you have a problem and you're, you, you're making dua. Would you believe that no prophet, no prophet has ever made dua al-mas'ala? They've always made dua al-ibadah. Even if they had the most difficult situation, they increased in their glorification of Allah. They all, they said, they increased. So you, you see what you're doing, you're glorifying Allah. You're saying, la ilaha illallah. There's no God, Ya Rabb, except you. Wahdahu la sharika la. Yeah, there is no partner with you. Lahul mulk wa lahul hamd. For you is the dominion. You are the king, Ya Rab, and for you is the praise. Wa huwa ala kulli shay'in qadir, and you are capable of all things. When you truly understand the meaning of what you're saying, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves us. And, and if you increase in your dhikr of this, uh, you know, the dua, the, the supplication that is meant to be, it generally even other than Arafah, believe me, Allah will fulfill the desires of your heart because that's what the messengers did. That's what the prophets did. They did not question, they did not ask Allah, Ya Rab, 
my son is is not behaving well can he behave well ya rab can you make me can you make me rich ya rab can you allow me to get a job no they increased in glorification of allah and allah fulfilled their duas you see so this is one thing that i want you to take home today is increase in the glorification of allah and especially with the words that nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam has taught us alhamdulillah the next good deed that you can do is doing hajj and umrah alhamdulillah by now who allah chose to be his guest they've already arrived in in mecca and they're going to be doing may allah accept their hajj may allah allow us to do hajj inshallah now nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam said an accepted hajj brings no less reward than jannah you see subhanallah an accepted hajj brings no less reward than jannah so may allah allow us to be his guests i mean then udhiya animal sacrifice one of the righteous deeds that bring a person closer to allah in these 10 days is to slaughter the sacrifice and what should you do of course your your ladies the, the men of the house are going to go and look for a good healthy animal and and to spend money on it for the sake of allah some countries are here it becomes a competition you know they want to show off so may allah keep us away from showing off trying to boast that you know i've bought an x amount of animal i brought this huge animal this you know this market there's a marketplace where you know the the prices go up um so may allah protect us from that but we are doing it for the sake of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala okay that's so that's very important that's what you need to bear in mind and you know you need to correct your intentions when you when you send your husbands and your brothers and your uncles to buy the animal ask them you know be humble and we're doing it for allah's sake because it's going to go in vain if we if we have any other intention other than that okay increase in repentance because these are uh, these are grand days and it's only right that we increase in istighfar why because maybe our sins will come in the way of us doing good because the moment you start feeling lazy you the moment you start feeling lazy that i, I you know I, just let me rest a bit for five more minutes and you know it's salah time but you're just lying down maybe you are missing a salah maybe you're not able to wake up for a salah so then in that case understand something has gone wrong somewhere okay so and what should you do then istighfar astaghfirullah 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 you can say astaghfirullah or astaghfir astaghfirullah rabbi min kulli dhanbi wa atubu ilayh whatever is easy for you the, but the most important thing is that you're not you're not saying it as if you're not meaning it you should mean it from the depth of your heart ya rab i have done ya rab forgive me for the mistakes that i have done knowingly or unknowingly yeah and ya rab allow me not to be able to do that so you have to you have to have a strong resolve i'm not going to do that i'm not going to do that action again i'm not going to do it i'm going to do what is pleasing to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so increase in your repentance so you know in the tasbihat that i was saying write it down so it's going to be astaghfirullah as well and it is anyway in in your morning and evening supplications that is there apart from that make extra time doing istighfar okay alhamdulillah salah most important most important now Alhamdulillah, most of you are diligent to pray your salah. But now the thing is, focus that you pray on time. Okay, focus on the sunnah rawatim, yeah, the sunnah prayers. Make sure that you take time out for nawafil as well. So you're praying duha, you're praying qiyam al-layl, you're putting extra effort. If you think you know you live in a place where the time between Aisha and Fajr is 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 less. then after aisha you know pray extra rakaz whatever is easy for you in 2 2 or 4 or 6 whatever is easy for you and that would be counted as your qiyam al-layl okay and nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam said do you think if there was a river by the door of one of you and he bathed in it five times a day there would remain any dirt on him 
The companions answered, there would not remain any dirt on him. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam said, that is how it is with the five daily prayers. Through them, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala washes away the minor sins. Yeah, so that in your to-do list, I'm going to pray on time. Okay, I'm going to add some sunnah prayers or, or rawatib, definitely. And make sure that you're doing rawatib. And what do I mean by rawatib? Two sunnah of fajr, that is most important. Your prayer is does not happen, you know, two sunnah. Then how many, the minimum of zuhar is four before zuhar. And make sure you pray in two and twos, not four altogether. So four before zuhar, uh, fard, and then two after. That makes it six. Then Maghrib, two, two sunnah after Maghrib, and two sunnah after Isha. These are rawatib, you have to do that. And then if you do that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala orders the angels to build a palace for you in Jannah. Subhanallah. Okay, so may Allah allow us. And then apart from that, you are putting an extra effort to pray nawafil and which nawafil i said to you i just explained to you about qiyam al-layl you can pray after isha if you think there is less time because you know in some countries isha does not happen in until 11 o'clock and 2 30 is fajr it's difficult for people so if you can do that and for those of you who are living in 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 countries where the time zone is okay then try and wake up for the hajj okay now ishraq pray pray the ishraq now ishraq is 15 minutes after the sun rises so if you are mashallah tabarakallah allah has allowed you to be you know to be able to do such good deed where you have prayed fajr like i said in some countries it's at 2 30 it's really difficult for people to wake up and and and, and sunrise is not until nearly four o'clock so it's difficult but if you are able to do that then that is ishraq you pray. So sun rose 15 minutes after the rising of the sun, you pray ishraq. And there's a good news for you. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa said, whoever prays fajr in congregation. So now that is men. But you know, we hope that the reward is for us women as well who are praying at home. Then they sit in the same place and they remember Allah until the sun has risen. And then he prays two rak'ah. Then for him is a reward like that of hajj and umrah. Okay, so anyone who's praying Ishraq, this is Ishraq. Look, there's another salah that's called Duha. Duha is when, you know, it's around about nine o'clock, 10 o'clock upwards until you, you, you go 15 minutes before the time of Zuhr. So, you know, your, your time, Zuhr is one o'clock, for example. So 12.45, you need to stop. So you can pray until 12.44. Okay, and that's going to be called Duha prayers. Ishraq is as soon as the sun rises and you wait 15 minutes and then you are, you, you pray two or four or six and the maximum you can do is eight, okay? And I think we need to try and do this because, you know, we've not been able to go for Hajj this year. So try and do it at least in one of the days, if possible, all the days, inshallah. Then recite Quran. Recite Quran, increase in your recitation of the Quran, increase in your memorization of the Quran, increase on your um, pondering over the Quran, contemplating over the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So you just, you know, you're not just reciting Quran and then you're getting tired and you, you're not motivated. So keep changing, keep changing, try learning some portion of the Quran. Okay, so. The Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, whoever recites a letter from the Book of Allah, he will receive one good deed. He will receive as 10 good deeds like it. I do not say Alif Lam Mim is one letter, but rather Alif is a letter, Lam is a letter, and Mim is a letter. Meaning for every letter, we're getting 10 good deeds. So, and what better days to recite Quran than these days where your deeds are going to be doubled. Yeah, you can pray both. You can pray Ishraq and Duha. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. You know, for all those of us who are feeling a bit sad that we have, you know, we didn't have the, the ability to go to Hajj for certain reasons, whatever that reasons may be. 
but there's good news. Like I told you about Ishraq, yeah? And, and the, the reward of Hajj, a complete Hajj and Umrah is for the Ishraq, not Duha, okay? Duha has other benefits. Um, if you, and this is, you know, we need to encourage the men of a house. And if we have, you know, arrangements where women can go as well. So there's a hadith that whoever goes out from his house after performing wudu to perform fard salah in congregation in masjid, he will be like the one who goes for hajj after wearing ihram. Okay. Whoever, and another hadith, whoever goes to the masjid for the sole purpose of learning or teaching what is good, he receives a reward of hajj pilgrim who has completed his, his hajj. So we'll try and recite more of the Quran. And like I said, write it in your to-do list. Let me, you know, I'll, I'll set yourself a target. You're going to memorize the last 10 surahs of Juzama. Or if you know 10, push yourself to another five. So this is what you're doing. You're memorizing, you're listening to the Quran. Sometimes you're reciting the Quran. Sometimes you're listening to the Quran. Sometimes you are reflecting. So take out your notes, your tafsir notes that you have made. Go on, go on, go over them and reflect on what are the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because sometimes we, we forget, you see. Now, donate. Donate. Why? Because charity extinguishes sinful deeds just as water extinguishes fire. And there's another hadith, protect yourself from the hellfire, even if, even with a half a date or with a little object of charity. So please make sure you're donating. And while we are on this topic, Ulum Academy has, you know, is trying to raise funds to sponsor orphans. And I was told that out of 50 orphans, only 26 orphans are left. So sisters, if you can, please donate and sponsor these orphans. Ask or ask, you know, if you think it's difficult for you, then ask, uh, you know, a group of friends among yourselves. And each one of them who donates because you encourage them to donate, you get the reward. You get the reward. So make sure and off and sponsoring an orphan. What an amazing good deed. What an amazing good deed. So these little children have no father. They don't have parents. But in Islam, orphan is someone who does not have a father. And and they and and hence they don't have any means of, of money coming in. So these children are waiting for all of you. So please make sure that you sponsor these 26 orphans that are left before so before these 10 days end so try and do it straight away you know the good deed has to be done straight away why because shaitan is going to make you forget yeah okay alhamdulillah may allah accept it from you for all those who made the intention may allah accept it from you all my dears so what do we conclude that we are going to do in you know what we did in our routine we are going to exert extra effort in praying in our nawafil, we are going to, you know, fast a bit more. We are going to increase in remembrance of Allah a bit more. We are in, going to increase in our, um, you know, rights of people. And inshallah, I'll come to that. You're going to increase in charity um, a, a little bit more than you, you would. Okay, alhamdulillah. Then spend and keep ties of kinship. Like I said, make sure you are fulfilling the rights of people. And in people come your parents on the topmost. So make sure if your parents are not living with you, you, you arrange a meeting where you go and see them. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive the, pa for the, the parents of those people who have passed away. So make sure if they have passed away, then make sure you, you include them in your du'as. Um, make easy for someone. If someone is going through a difficulty and you're able to do that, like I said, those orphan children are waiting for you, you can make it easy for them. Or you can help someone, right? So make sure that you are making life easy for people and not difficult for people. So any action of yours that is going to benefit another person, make sure that that's your top priority. Okay, write it down. Any action that is going to benefit someone else, I'm going to do it. 
So you're going to do extra, extra good deeds that you normally do. Okay, so make sure that you don't waste these days. Okay, make sure you don't waste these days. And look here, the hadith. He who loves Allah, he, he who loves that he be granted more provision. So if you want your risk to be increased or you want your life to be prolonged, should join ties with his blood relations. Okay, make sure that if you know there are, and your blood relations firstly are your parents, then it's your brothers and sisters. Uh, and parents include grandparents too. So if you've abandoned any of them, make sure you make up for them. And look, there's a huge motivation for that. Do you not want to live a little bit longer so that you're able to do good deeds? Don't you want to increase in risk? Then please make sure you do that. Okay. Another thing I want you to, to and the sisters whose parents have passed away, may Allah have mercy on them. <clears throat> Buy gifts for your parents' friends. Make sure you buy gifts and you send gifts to your parents' friends. That is a, a huge reward. Okay. Revive the sunnah. So, you know, I wrote some and I was going to ask you to tell me some of the forgotten, some of the forgotten sunnahs. So, for example, make sure that you are putting extra effort to do wudu before going to bed. Okay, you're, you're saying Bismillah, you're saying Bismillah only, not Bismillah rahman rahim but only Bismillah before eating. Alhamdulillah, after eating, morning and evening adhkar. And um, that's something I said is try and do some secret good deeds. You know, sa saying salam, jazakallah khair. I'm going to come to secret deeds. Giving a smile, jazakallah khair, yes. Okay. What else? What else can be? Reviving a, a forgotten sunnahs, doing miswak. Okay, you make effort to do miswak. Okay, charity. Okay, tell me of the some forgotten sunnahs. Do you know any sunnahs that have people are not doing it anymore? Okay, Asha'Allah tabarakallah. Removing dangerous objects from from the way, uh, doing sajda shukr, seeking knowledge. Alhamdulillah. Yes, yeah, sitting and drinking water, good. Alhamdulillah. Drinking, drinking and eating with the right hand. I thought that that, you know, I expect everybody in our class to know that at least. Dusting the bed before sleeping. Yes. Um, reciting the dua when going to the market. Yes. Being good to the neighbor. Yes. Leaving left foot when you leave the house. Um, and, and that is left foot leave the house when you're doing for dunya matters. Yeah. But when you go into the mosque, then your right foot forward. Visiting the sick people, mashallah. Sharing iftar, beautiful. That's amazing. Attending a funeral, okay. Dusting shoes before wearing, yes, mashallah. Yeah, laying a bit after the Fajr Sunnah, that is something forgotten. Making dua before leaving the house, yeah, good. Making salam when you enter the house. Even if it is, even if, if your house, no one's in your house and you say, assalamu alayka. So you say salam to yourself and to the angels who are in the house. Hmm. Entering the, the washroom with the left foot in, yes, first, yeah. And um, of course, the dua for entering the washroom, keeping the ties, yes, mashallah, having a nap after the hor. Mashallah, tabarakallah, you all know, may Allah bless you all. Um, yeah, removing shoes from the left, yes, so that you get, give the right foot some time. MashaAllah, MashaAllah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, um, you know, increase you all in beneficial knowledge. It's, I'm really humbled. MashaAllah, you all know so much and you still come to my class. Alhamdulillah. <laughs> That's very kind of you. Alhamdulillah. Let's come back here now. May Allah allow us to act on these. Yes, stop the yawning, eating with three fingers. That's a difficult one. Yeah. Making dua for all the Muslims, inshallah, visiting the sick. Alhamdulillah. Um, the, you know, I was talking about doing some secret good deeds. Now, when you're when you're in your house, your children are watching you. Um, your family, whoever you're living with, are watching you. Now, make sure that some deeds that you're doing that no one knows. No one knows. So even if it is that you wake up in the middle of the night to pray. That no one, you're doing it so discreetly that people don't know about it. And also, um, 
when you wake up in the middle of the night, make sure that, you know, you're crying, remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A drop that is shed, you know, just with the fear of Allah, for Allah, then that person will not be allowed to go to the hellfire. So make sure you're doing something. Make sure you're doing something secretly that no one knows and that, that is between you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay. Guard your tongue. Now, how do we guard our tongue? And there's a hadith. Um, I'm sure you all know the hadith that a person who guarantees, uh, you know, the, to what between, you know, is God's what is between his jaws and between his legs is Allah, Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that, that uh, Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam guarantees Jannah for that person. So what is it? The, the tongue. Because you hurt, we hurt people with our talk, isn't it? And also avoid vain talk, useless talk. Okay, and arguments. Just, just leave it. And already one of the sisters has already mentioned, speak good or remain silent. Okay. Yes, counsel between two people who are fighting. And we've learned that from Surah Hujrat, alhamdulillah. Okay, and be just with them. Then be wary of your time. Now, you need to consciously make an effort that you're not going to be on social media during these nine days. Yes, do not waste time because you know it's easily, a person gets easily carried away. You watch one reel after another reel or you watch one update after another update and, and you, you don't know where the time's gone. Okay, so avoid wasting, you write this down boldly that I'm gonna discipline myself and I'm not going to be on social media except if I have to do something important, okay? Keep away from sins and haram. Okay, and I just mentioned to you, sins are an obstruction in doing good. So we need to increase in istighfar, increase in istighfar and, uh, and what else? Consciously avoid doing sinning. Consciously avoid doing things that are gonna make Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala unhappy. Lots and lots of dua. Make dua for yourself. Make dua for every single person you know. And there's a hadith, I'm going to paraphrase the meaning of it, that when a person, when a Muslim person, you make dua for your Muslim brother in his absence, brother or sister in their absence, and an angel comes and says, Ameen, and for you the same. So always remember people in, in a good way. Make dua for them. Okay, and there's another hadith that there is no Muslim who calls upon Allah without a sin or cutting family ties. You see, if you sin or you cut family ties, then there is, you know, your dua is not going to be answered. But if you don't, if you are, you're not sinning, you're not cutting ties, that Allah will give him one of the three answers. So you you making dua, you you didn't do you didn't get involved in any sin, you're keeping your t family ties then one of the three things can happen. Allah will, number one, Allah quickly will fulfill his supplication. So your dua is gonna be answered. Number two, he, Allah will store it for him in the hereafter. Or Allah will divert an evil from him similar to it. Yeah? The Sahaba then said, in that case, we will ask for more, meaning we will be more, you know, you, we will be more, um, we'll be put, putting more effort in making dua. And the Prophet وسلم, said, Allah has even more. Okay. So we need to increase in our duas. Yeah, it, increase a lot in duas. Increase a lot in your duas. Ask Allah, and I always tell my students, you know, ask if you're a young girl. Ask Allah to give you a righteous husband. Ask and, and make dua that Allah makes a, a scholar from your progeny, from your children. And for those who have children, make dua for your grandchildren to be scholars of Islam, the scholars on the correct Quran and the Sunnah. 
Yeah. So make dua even for things that you can't see. You can't you can't see them, but you you have a vision about them and you make dua for that. Because in the end of the day, that's your sadaqa jariya. So you're looking you that you're making investment in your duas. Okay. So make lots of duas. So takbirat. Now, what are the takbirat? This is the most important thing that you should be doing. Saying Allahu Akbar aloud in, in these days is the greatest ritual. Yeah, this is the most important and the beautiful remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And what is it? Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. La ilaha illallah. You can say Wallahu Akbar and you can say Allahu Akbar. Both ways is correct. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, walillahi alhamd. Allahu Akbar meaning Allah is the greatest. You, you're three times reiterating this and saying la ilaha illallah. There's no, no one worthy of worship except Allah. Allah is the greatest. Allah is the greatest. Walillahi alhamd. And to Allah belongs all the praise. Okay. And now these are, this is two important things. At this moment, we are in the middle, we, we've just started the hijjah, right? So we are going to be doing unrestricted takbir, meaning it is going to be said all the time, starting from the beginning of the hijjah. So when you heard the announcement that the hijjah began, you are going to do it all the time. So there's no restriction, there's no time restriction. So you're going to do it until the 13th of the hijjah. So you don't stop on Eid day. You carry on until the 13th of the calendar. Men raise their voices everywhere and women in their homes can raise their voice. Okay, so that they remind others. Whereas restricted takbirat start from the Fajr of the day of Arafah. Okay, so the Fajr of day of Arafah, the ninth of Dil Hijjah, you are going, when you pray Fajr, then you sit down after your Salah, after every first Salah and you say the takbirat. And you're going to continue that until the 13th of Dil Hijjah. Yeah, and you, there's no restriction that you should say three times, four times. You can say as much as you want. You glorify Allah as much as you want. Okay. Alhamdulillah. So, and um, you know, the Salaf, the, the pious predecessors, they would exert so much during these 10 days that people would see them, you know, they, they, you know when they would speak to them, they would find them weak. Why? Because they are they were they, they were putting extra effort in worshiping Allah, extra effort in doing good deeds. Okay. And most importantly, you know, whenever you're going to be doing the good deeds, and alhamdulillah, you all have been writing, um, is that there's two criteria, okay? Um, because we know. In Surah Mulk, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that Allah has made life and death as a means of test. Yeah? To see who is doing good. Now, doing good is what? That number one, that your intention is just for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the second, that the action that you're doing is according to the sunnah of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So you can't do what your heart desires, but you have to find an evidence from the sunnah. And there's a dua, Allahumma a'inni ala dhikrika wa shukrika wa husni ibadatik. Yeah, Allah help me in, in glorifying you, in, in showing gratitude to you, and in beautifying the acts of worship. Now make sure that you are making this dua. And most importantly, once you've done the good deeds, don't be arrogant and say, I've done such and such good deed. Okay? You carry on doing more and more and make dua, Ya Rab, accept it from me. Yeah? Make sure that you make dua that you, Allah accepts it from you. Finally, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, to give us the ability to act upon all that we have studied, planned, because without that, you know, without the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it's not going to be pos possible. And like I said, sincerity. You know, when you're doing any action, any good deed, it has to be based on solely, sincerely for, yeah, it's for you, on sincerity that we are performing the good deed to seek the face of Allah alone. And by remembering the great virtues of each worship that you're doing, 
um, in order to multiply our deeds. And then lastly, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept the worship, you know, like we said, we, we're going to pray for our brothers and sisters in Islam, so we're going to pray for them. If they don't know us, but we make dua that Ya Allah accept their hajj, and Ya Rab call us um, as well for hajj next year. Ameen. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Now, let's do, now these were some things that came into my mind. Now, can you think of some more deeds? some more good deeds that you can do. Can you, can you mention? Let's see, we have another five minutes. And some more good deeds that maybe I have missed on. You know, like I said to you, yes, making tawbah, help parents. Yeah, we've, we've said that. You know, when I said to you, write down the azkar, like I said, make sure you read 100 times. That is the minimum, 100 times. Subhanallah, alhamdulillah, hundred times, alhamdulillah, hundred times, Allahu Akbar, hundred times, la hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. Don't forget to recite uh, Salatul Nabi. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad, Allahumma salli ala Muhammad. Yeah. Alhamdulillah. What about honoring guests? Make sure you honor your guests. If you have guests in the house, you honor them. Uh, avoid eating outside. <laughs> okay. Teaching the deen, yes. Good. And somebody already mentioned, you know, sending iftar. So feeding feeding people, saying good words. Okay, alhamdulillah. In, okay. Yeah, but don't, you know, the, someone's writing, inviting people for, you know, inviting people to your house. Try and cut that down because these are the days. Because when people come to your house, you're going to be involved in talking and all the preparation of food. It's better send simple iftar to people's homes and focus on your, on your worships. Okay, give rights of neighbors. Okay, good. If you have sons and brothers and husbands and fathers, ask them to... Uh, go and pray in the mosque. Yes. Look at the sky and be happy and say, subhanallah. Look at the flowers around you and look at the, um, the trees around you and say, subhanallah. That's going to earn you rewards. Okay. What about anger? Should you get angry these days? Control anger. Okay. Very good. Control anger. If somebody comes to you and they're really upset, um, should you ask them to yeah, carry on? Um, getting upset or should you give them sincere advice giving sincere advice okay give gifts to people okay sabr no fighting okay alhamdulillah after there's another thing after salah you anxiously waiting for the next salah okay um you know when it came to showing um you know showing respect to parents showing respect to your teachers, showing respect to the people of knowledge. Make sure you do that. No gossiping and backbiting. Yes. Okay. Helping the needy people. And like I said, don't forget, make the intention that you're going to support some orphans. Alhamdulillah. Um, someone has done really bad to you. You forgive them so that Allah forgives you. Yeah, you, you found out something and you know, you, you verified the news, you found out about a fault of certain person. What should you do? What should you do? Conceal it, hide it. Good, alhamdulillah. Um, if there's a harmful object in the way, try and remove it. Um, yeah, we spoke about sponsoring an orphan, inshallah. Um, if, if there is, if people are raising money to, um, to build a mosque, make sure you put your share in it. Okay. And somebody already mentioned about reconciling people. Okay. Make sure that you are in the state of wudu all the time. Okay, good. Mashallah, somebody did mention doing household chores. Okay. If, you know, if, if mostly people are going to be fasting. And if they're not fasting, fasting or not, make sure that you bring a glass of water to them. And, alhamdulillah. And making sure that you take time out where you are showing gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
for all the blessings that Allah gives, has given. Mm -hmm. Anyone, anything else? Helping widows, yes. And somebody already mentioned wearing the right shoe first and taking off the left shoe first. Okay, Miss Flag. Um, if you are in debt, make sure that you're returning the loan in the excellent manner. Okay. Alhamdulillah. You are encouraging your children to pray. Okay. Another, another forgotten sunnah is, you know, when Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, I'm paraphrasing the hadith, he would wake up. Um, for his salah during the night he would wipe over his face when waking up for the hajjub and he would recite as soon as he would wake up without going to the toilet first he would wake up and recite the last 10 ayahs of surah ali Ibrahim. so that's something you need to write it down and do it okay even if you have it on your phone and you don't you've not memorized it wiping over the face when waking up for the hajjub okay Make sure you're doing wudu well, but also you're not spending, too, you're not spilling too much water. Some people are going to do wudu endlessly. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would do wudu in half a glass of water. So using minimum water, not, you know, not let the tap run or flood the toilet, but doing, performing wudu, you're diligently performing wudu, making sure every part is, is wet, but at the same time, you're not wasting water. Okay. Uh, what else? Surah Mulk before sleeping. Good. And also going for Eid Salah. Yes, that is also a Sunnah. Going for Eid Salah. Helping um, a student of knowledge if they are going through a difficult time. Being gentle. Yes, on Fridays. Yes. Reciting Surah al -Kahf. Being kind to the animals even if they are your animals or they're someone else's animals. Okay, and reminding other people of the good deeds. Okay, alhamdulillah. Um, we'll just quickly go through some um, sunnahs of the Eid day. And I'm sure that you all know, for all those of you who are, yes, feed the birds, mashallah, wonder on our last creation. Um, or for all those of you who are going to um, send the, the money for animal to be sacrificed, you are not going to trim your um, nails or cut your hair. Okay. Certain sunnahs of Eid day. Alhamdulillah, us women, we are keen to wear new clothes. Alhamdulillah. So you're going to wear special clothes. And if you're not going to go out with and uh, mix with the men, then you can use a perfume. And the most important thing is you're not, you know, when you're going for your Eid Salah, you're not going to eat anything before going, you know, before your prayer. So only when you come back home and you've prayed Eid Salah, then you eat. Okay, please make sure you do that. In Eid Al-Fitr, you eat dates, you eat something sweet, and then you leave house. But for Eid al-Adha, you're not going to eat anything until you return. Okay? Until you return from prayer, only then you eat. And while you're going, you are reciting takbirat all the way. Takbirat on the way and the way back. Remember, we're going to be reciting takbirat until the 13th. And then use a, one, a different route. So going, you're going on a route in, in uh, one direction and then another route for uh, coming back, coming back home. So use different routes to and from the Eid prayer. Okay. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept our intentions. May Allah accept our ibadah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, allow us to benefit from these days that it is meant to be. And you see the day of Arafah is going to be on the Friday. And we know that when the ayah was revealed that we've perfected the religion, it was on Eid day. It, it was Arafah day on the Friday. And, um, and there's a hadith that the devil, the shaitan, appears at the valley of Urayna beside Arafat and is not considered more abased, more cast out, more contempt, contemptible or angrier on, on any day other than the day of Arafah, beside the day of Badr. So it is heavy on the shaitan on this day of Arafah. 
So Alhamdulillah, um, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept it from all of you, for you coming to the class. The admin has just reminded me again, and I know inshallah I have um, good faith in all of you, that you are going to do your best to try and um, support those orphans who are looking for sponsorship because this is the greatest deed that we can do, inshallah. There's only 26 orphans. Um, inshallah, may Allah allow us to be the means of their happiness. May Allah make us of those people who are bringing smiles to the faces of people because, you know, subhanAllah, the greatest thing that we can do is be kind to the human beings and be kind to the animals. Like I said to you, we know that we know exactly how much money we have, but we don't know how much time we have. So, Jazakumullahu Khairan, my dear sisters. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala heal the sick among us. May Allah accept your ibadah. May Allah accept your intentions. May Allah accept all our intentions. May Allah make us of those people, you know, next year, even if we don't have a class that we allow, He allows us from his noble way, whatever he can, because we can't, you know, the, the, the prices of Hajj have gone up. Only Allah can make means for us to, uh, to, to be his uh, honorable guest and to be on uh, Hajj. And maybe, may we remember that, you know, we made this dua sincerely from the bottom of our heart and Allah has accepted that we will be witnessing. We will be one of those people who will be called for Hajj next year, inshallah. And we'll be of those people who Allah is happy with. May Allah grant our children hidayah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make our children righteous. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make the day that we die the best day of our lives, where the angels are giving us the good news that you have been given Jannah. Allah is happy with you. Jazakumullah khairan, sisters. Subhanakallahumma bihamdika shadun la ilaha illa anta. Astaghfiruka, 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 wa atubu ilayk. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.